a little bit later on. And there's a children theme to the next part of the programme as well. Sarah Wilkes from Bingham used to be a nursery nurse, but now she's a professional photographer. Uh, but she specialises in taking pictures of babies and bumps of mums-to-be. And uh, she's with us now. Sarah, hello. Hiya. Thank you for coming in. And can I say thank you for showing me all your photographs, which have made me incredibly broody. <laughs> That's OK. I'm pleased to be here. Wow. Uh, how did this all start? How did you get into this? Um, it started just after I had my second son, Daniel, and I couldn't find any body that sort of hit the spot with photographs in general. Mm. Um, and so I decided to start taking photographs myself, really. Because those early photographs are really important, aren't they? They it, definitely are, and I didn't get them yeah. because I didn't learn the art of photography till later into his life. Right. Um, he's three years old now. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I just um, practised and practised and managed to save up enough money for a professional camera and started portfolio building because people said, wow, you're really good at this. Mm. And um, it just went from there, really, and snowballed quite fast into starting a business. And they're lovely pictures as well. I mean, if I could describe them, it's a little bit hard on the radio, of course, but um, they're not just sort of ordinary pictures. It's not like just a baby lying in a cot take a picture no, of it. You, you actually you stage the photographs. Yeah, they're very posed. Um, we make sure baby's all milky drunk and fast asleep. And, uh, <laughs> milky <posed> drunk? <laughs> yeah. <I love> that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're posed in baskets and yeah. hanging baskets and um, You have babies, you have newborn babies leaning on their hands in the yes. way that children would sort of in front of a television set. Yes. How do you yes, do that? Do. Um, very patiently and slowly. So they stay asleep through the whole process and shushing them calmly and the room has to be very warm so they're sleepy mm. and it's it's amazing. They're very poseable um, before they get to 10 days old. Right. And I suppose your nursery nurse background must, must come in quite handy as well. Uh, yes, it does, I suppose, especially when, when I'm taking photographs of older children. Um, mm. So it helps them a bit mental, I think. If you work with children, you have to be a bit nuts. So you a little bit, yeah. You, know, <laughs> you don't mind acting a fall in front of them and to get them to laugh. And yeah, so I don't know. that. How, how do you get children's attention? Because I know that I was looking through the photographs that I've taken on my iPhone of, yeah. of, of the kids, and it's really difficult to get them to look at the camera. They're like, oh, Dad. <laughs> how do you do well, that? Well, at the moment, I can't get my son to look at my camera. He knows all my tricks now. Oh. Um, the first one that I used to do with him was... I fake sneeze massive and my hair falls in front of my face and that always gets a laugh and they always look at me then. Right, I like that. And I also make um, lens lovies that go on the end of my lens and they're like sort of camera pets, the um, animals that you attach around the, your lens and I see speak in silly voices to get the kids to look at, into the lens. That's so a genius idea, the, the, the sort of fairy toys, the little yeah, animals. Yeah, they, they almost look like a hair scrunchie mm. that goes around the lens and then there's um, animal body parts. <laughs> Um, sewn on to the uh, to the scrunchie around yeah. the lens, and so they've been really good actually. Oh, you wily fox! <laughs> that is genius. Was was photography something that that maybe as a kid you you thought you'd like to do? Um, I've always been interested in it. I've always loved taking photographs, but I never dreamed that I would get to this stage in my life. Um, it's it's quite amazing actually. Um, mm. Now I I mean I've always wanted to be an ocean nurse. I've always wanted to work with children um, ever since I was little. Um, and then this turn, you know, new new path in my life's been quite a surprise, really. Um, but a I natural know. progression, though, in, yeah, in many ways. Yeah, yeah, really it is. Um, still working with kids, and it, it's fantastic. But it's yeah. the newborns that I have the passion with. Yeah, you, you said that it wasn't until sort of three years after your your, your baby was born that you you really g nailed taking photographs. You learned how to take a proper photograph. How do you learn something like that? It's just um, lots of reading, lots of practicing, and really just learning how to master your camera. Um, I just started out with a mum with a camera. It wasn't mm. a professional camera, it was just a point and shoot. And I really learnt how to rock that, and then natural progression went on to a more professional camera. Um, and learning how to, to work it in manual. and. Because that, that's really good advice to anybody, isn't it, who's got yeah. a camera. Even if it's just a, a phone camera, is yeah. know your way around it. Definitely. Learn Learn what it can do. Yeah, yeah. I definitely suggest learning how to use it in manual. I think that's where I 
started to see the difference in my pictures because before in automatic and that the phone or that your camera sort of makes its mind up of how it wants the photograph to look but right. you need to see it yourself and what you kind of things can you change just describe what do you mean by that by by, um, by manual aperture and shutter speed right. and iso um, and actually even some of the very basic cameras you can turn you the can automatic my, off. My first one, which was a bridge camera, it was like a cross between a point and shoot and a DSLR. Mm. Um, you couldn't change the lenses or anything, but you could use it in manual and automatic, so I learned how to use it in manual. We'll talk some more in just a moment. You okay to hang around? Yeah, no problem. <coughs> we'll take a look through the portfolio and I'll get even more broody uh, <laughs> before the end of this. Sarah Wilkes is from Bingham. It's BBC Radio Nottingham. Headline news. And as well, Sarah Wilkes from Bingham is my guest at the moment. I introduced you to her just before the headlines and she used to be a nursery nurse, but now she's a professional photographer. She takes pictures of babies, newborn babies, but also uh, babies before they're born as well in, in mum's bumps. Uh, some brilliant pictures. I mean, I I'm looking at the portfolio and I'm just checking out your website as well, Sarah. It feels very new. There's this style of photography. Where's it? Where's it come from? Yeah, it's um, very, very. Um, is it? It's, it's not British, is it? No, it's from America. Right. Um, yes, it's, it's very popular over there. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, I just absolutely love it yeah. and I just started doing it because it's it's not here at all uh, there's photographers picking up, up on it really quickly um, if you look and um, search around Google and all the websites and stuff you can see f it's coming into uh, the UK now but it's really popular in America mm. there's one image that I absolutely adore of a, a baby's newborn little cute feet I told, yeah. seriously tell me really broody uh, <laughs> and and what you've done on the big toes is you've put mum and dad's wedding ring yes see it's that kind of thing that, that you would never dream of doing where, where do you get inspiration to do things like that um a lot of the american photographers right. um there's a couple that i really like um, um baby is art is one and kelly ryden's another um i just think their work is beautiful um, I have a totally different style to them with regards to editing and that mine's very bright and colourful mm. um, but the the actual poses uh, obviously there's a limit to what different poses you can do with a newborn baby mm. so a lot of the poses are the same well you say that but there's there's a, a massive range of uh, poses that yeah. you manage to, to, to get out of these babies but the, the pictures that I, I adore as well are the pictures where it's mum or, or dad and mum and dad are sort of stripped presumably to the waist and they're yes. holding baby as well is, is it quite difficult to convince a new mum to strip down because if there's one thing I know about my Jo and never she'd just given birth she was incredibly self-conscious about the way she looked um, some mums don't want to be in the photographs at all really? and they, they want just dads to be because they love the the ones where the baby's lying on the dad's arm and you can just see the arm yeah. um, and the baby um, some mums are okay about it because they understand that I can liquefy and suck and tuck a little bit in, right. in, in, in editing <laughs> um, but yeah, they are beautiful, and really, I, all I say is, this time just goes so, so fast, and you'll look back in even two weeks' time, and that mm. baby will have changed so much. So, you might not like the look of yourself, but your your child will absolutely love these photographs when they get older, and it's such a precious memory. So I would definitely go for it. Mm. Has there been any recognition of, of your skill? Have any of your photographs been published anywhere, for example? Um, I've won a few competitions. Um, I won one, um, my photograph of my little boy in Bluebells was uh, Nottinghamshire's Great British Photograph and published in the Country Life magazine. Right. Um, and also I won, um, I came runner-up in Macmillan... It was a 2010 project this year, and it's just been published in a book, Life is a Bed of Roses, that's on sale at the moment. Um, and I was runner-up in the um, Fine Art and Photoshop Magic category. Okay. When you win a competition like that, and, and the Macmillan one particularly, a uh, great cause, great charity that, that you've done that for, how do you feel when, when work is recognised like that and you win a competition? It's amazing, really, because it's like, I just feel me. <laughs> Why though? Because I look at all the other entrants, and there's some of them just blow me away. Mm. So it's um, it's an honour, it really is. That's incredible, isn't it? Because your work's pretty spectacular as well. Uh, it, was there a moment where you just woke up and decided, you know what, I, I'm going to do this for a living? 
And you went yeah, for it? Yeah, sort of. I mean, I'd, I'd been taking the photographs and learning how to do it purely as a mum with a camera just for my own personal use um, and posting them on photography forums for critique. And then they kept saying to me, Sarah, you really have to go into business. These are amazing. Um, and I was going, no, no, I just can't cope with that business side of things. Um, but then I, I started portfolio building and, and taking photos for free um, just in case, but then one day I just woke up and decided to ring HMRC and say that I was self-employed. <laughs> I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. <laughs> That's quite a leap of faith, isn't it? Uh, yeah, most certainly. I went on, um, managed to get myself a business, business advisor and went on all the um, business link courses, yeah. which really helped. Um, but yeah, it's uh, quite overwhelming at times. Mm. When you've got kids and you've got mouths to feed, it's yeah, quite definitely, terrifying. definitely, brilliant. It's paying off. Do, do you do it? Uh, do you have a studio or is it mobile? It's. Mo I used to have a home studio, but right. um, when I lived in Harworth in Doncaster, but now I've moved back to Bingham. Um, I go mobile, so I serve clients in the comfort of their own homes. I would truly love a studio, though, um, but renting ones. I need to find one and, mm. and stuff. But actually, going mobile has doubled my workload because whereas a newborn shoot takes four hours, it's now suddenly turned into eight because of the travel, the loading, mm. the setting up and, and all that. So I would ideally love a studio where I can have everything set up already. It could be <clears throat> have a kind of shop front where people can just come in and see the, my work on the walls. Um, so if anybody's got anything for me to <laughs> rent, I would love one. Sarah, it's been really uh, good meeting you. I think this is a, a, a Nottinghamshire success story in the making. I mean, it's a success story already, but I think Thank we should you. keep an eye on you. It's good to meet you. Thank you very much. Sarah Wilkes uh, from Bingham on BBC Radio Nottingham. Uh, there is a